Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise ye the Lord. Good morning to you. I'm Dr. Henry Simon. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowship's online Sunday service. We're so happy that you have chosen to join us whatever day of the week it is. I pray that your morning, your day has been uh, just a splendid day. Uh, we are live from Dallas, Texas. Thank you for joining us. We are so, so, so uh, just blessed to have the presence of the Lord right here in our studio. Thank you for joining us. Most of all, thank the Holy Spirit. I thank the Holy Spirit for being here with us this morning. I can't do anything without him. I rely and depend upon him. He is my source. He is your source. He's my strength. He's your strength. Amen and amen. I want you to shake that heaviness off. I want you to shake that heaviness off. I want you to shake that situation off of you. Paul was bit by a snake, if you remember, on the island of Malta uh, in the book of Acts. And to, he did nothing wrong. He was just picking up twigs. He was picking up, you know, branches to, to make a fire to, so that he can warm himself and so on and so forth. And as the Bible says that a viper came out and latched onto him. And all the locals looked around at him and said, surely this man is cursed. You got here luckily, but now fate has found you. I want to tell you, it wasn't about luck or so on and so forth. It was God's very will that he get to the island of Malta. It was just a stop. Wherever you are in your life, it's just a stop. Something bad has occurred. Something happened uh, has happened. And it's latched itself to you. I, I, I want to tell you to, to, to shake that thing off. Shake that thing off. And I want you to give God the highest praise. Give God the highest praise today. Give God the highest praise. Give God the highest praise. And worship the Lord your God. Amen and amen. I feel that for somebody. I feel that is not in my notes. I did not uh, uh, pre-plan to say this. I'm telling you, I love to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we give you thanks and praise. We worship your name. The name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Father God, we honor you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for all the blessings, for they come from above, Lord God. Good things come from above. They come from you, our Father. And we're so thankful, Lord God. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for our families, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for food on our table. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the air that we breathe. Lord God, I am so grateful for you. And I thank you that you are my portion. You are our portion. Now, Father, have your way. Fill us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Would you just thank him wherever you are? Would you clap your hands unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Amen and amen. Well, today is the day that the Lord has made. I will be, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good God that he is. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowships Online Sunday service. I am your host and pastor. I'm Dr. Henry Simon. Once again, I want to welcome you to our uh, online non-denominational uh, ministry that's located right here in Dallas, Texas. For those of you who are watching us around the world, we welcome you. We welcome you to the United States. We welcome you to America. I live in Texas. Amen. The great state of Texas. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, I, I want to invite you to invite a friend, uh, tell someone about us, give us a heart, 
uh, give us a like. Uh, you can leave your comments and so on and so forth. I tell you, uh, the responses have just been overwhelming um, these past few weeks that we've started this new series. And we have intentionally started sending uh, the Word of God around the world, Australia. Many of you are reaching out to us. We thank you. Phil the Philippines and um, and uh, uh, parts of Europe and Canada uh, and even right here in the United States. We are so thankful. I think the past two Sundays we've had nearly 20,000 20, views. And, you know, uh, this is not about me. This is about Matthew 28 and 19 and 20. This is about sending the word. This is about uh, uh, reaching the lost, reaching the lost for the kingdom of God. We are uh, wanting to advance the kingdom of God. I have been asking the Lord for decades now, Lord, give me the nations. Lord, send me to the nations. And though it's coming through this medium here in terms of... Um, 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 uh, online uh, services and so on and so forth. I'm looking forward someday to perhaps uh, visiting your church, visiting, visiting your country. And so uh, I, I want you to know, my son will put the information at the end of the screen. Um, we are now accepting, okay, uh, opportunities to uh, bring the word of God right where you are. And so my son will put the information on the screen at the end of um this uh, this particular service, and we're looking for great and mighty things from God uh, in 2023. Are you? You have to expect great things. You have to believe by faith. Amen and amen. Well, when we're online, join us every Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. I don't believe we'll always be in this format, but suffice it to say, this is where the Lord has us right now in this season. It's just the season. Okay, and so right here, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for those of you who are in uh, the United States of America. To all of my guests who are from my visitors, uh, that is, online, who are from Alaska, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Man, amen. I have a special guest in the studio audience. It's my daughter. She's never here. And I'm so blessed that my baby girl is here with me today in the name of Jesus. I feel like I'm going to preach real good because she's here. Amen. And amen. Amen. I have two children. My wife and I have been married almost 28 years. And we have two um, uh, just about adult children. And so, well, one is. And uh, so... We are thankful. We're thankful for the blessings that God has has blessed us uh, with. And you know what, guys? Tomorrow is my wife's birthday. And so I want to say a special, special birthday to my wife. Yes, she's an October 31 um, uh, a woman. Woman of God. Proverbs 31. That's what she is. Proverbs 31. Yeah, I know this Halloween stuff. She's a Proverbs 31 woman. Amen and amen. And that is my baby. That's the mother of my children. Amen and amen. So, baby, happy uh, birthday to you. Um, and the Lord be with you. Amen and amen. Well, every week I like to give a, a scripture verse of the, the week. And so uh, my son's going to put that on the screen for us. And we're going to come from the book of Proverbs. I absolutely love Proverbs. Wisdom is something that I always desire of God <clears throat> or from God. And uh, and so the Pro Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3 says, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I, I, I hope you understood, especially in the times in which we live today, we need discernment. We need, we need wisdom. We need knowledge and understanding of the Holy One. Amen and amen, amen. 
good God that you are, I pray that you will, um, you will meditate on this particular uh, passage of scripture. God is, I tell you, if you ask, he'll give it to you. Overflow, he'll give it to you. He'll give, he'll give it to you. Ask him for wisdom. And in all your asking, get understanding. Amen and amen. Ask him for a discerning heart. Amen and amen. Good God that you are. Glory to God. Uh, I'm going to have my son put our pinwheel uh, graph up. And so we've been talking about the nine keys to advance in the kingdom of God. And today uh, is our fourth installment of our current series, Advance in the Kingdom of God. So we've covered uh, Make a Sound and Character Matters and Courageous Faith, which was really, really good last week. And today we're going to talk about something that's near to my, my wife and, 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 and my heart, and that's prayer and the Word of God. Prayer and the Word of God. And so next week, don't miss it. It's about your declaration. There's power in your words. Your declaration, amen? Declare a thing. Declare it. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I've started just kind of looking into uh, next week's um, uh, uh, message. And man, I'm excited to get there. But suffice it to say today, we're going to talk about a beautiful thing. And that's prayer and the word of God. That's spending time with him. Amen and amen and the power that is in that amen and amen well our scripture verse for today comes none other than from the book of uh, joshua chapter 9 and we're going to read verses 1 through 16 this morning joshua chapter 9 and we'll be back in joshua uh next week as well but joshua uh, chapter 9, and let's begin at the uh, very first verse. I believe my son has that scripture for you, and we'll have him put that up. And so I thank you, young man. And it came to pass when all the kings who were on the side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowland, and in all the coast of the great sea, toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard about it, that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. Did you get that? As God moves you up, people are taking notice. Your enemies are taking notice. As God moves you up, as God moves you around, as God changes your locale, uh, uh, the, uh, people are taking note of you. And it says that they gather together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. So if the hand of God is upon you, they've taken note of you and they're going to fight with you because you intimidate them because uh, uh, there's something about you. It's not about your degree. It's not about your diploma. It's not about your experience. It's about the God in you. Yeah, all the added stuff is there, and it's intimidating in and of itself, especially if they don't possess it. But the thing you possess, the thing that separated David from Saul, was the spirit of the living God was upon him. Good God that you are. Verse 3. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they worked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors. And they took old sacks of their, on their donkeys and old wineskins torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet and old garments on themselves. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a, a far country. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. And the men of Israel said to the Hivites, perhaps you dwell among us. So how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, we are your servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you? Where do you come from? So they said to him, From a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God.
For we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan, to, uh, to, to Sihon, uh, uh, king of Heshbon, and Ah, king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Therefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you uh, for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants. Now therefore make a covenant with us, this bread of ours. We took hot for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and moldy. And these wineskins, which we, we filled, were new. And see, they, they, they're torn. And these are garments, and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. Verse 14. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. They did not inquire of God. Verse 15. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And it happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt near them. But today's message is entitled Deception or truth? The sword of the spirit. Deception or truth? Trick or treat? The sword of the spirit. Father, I need your anointing. Speak through me. Anoint me. Empower me. Allow us to hear. Teach us, Daddy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to thank you again for joining us. We're so, so glad that you're, you're here with us, and we pray that you're growing in the knowledge and the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, this is part four. And my focus today is the importance of prayer in the Word of God. This weekend, many people will celebrate a holiday referred to here in America and other parts of the world as Halloween. Halloween is a, is a holiday celebrated each year on October 31st, at least here in the United States. Uh, the tradition originated with the ancient Celtic or Celtic festival of Samhain, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. Samhain is a pagan religious festival originating from an ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. In modern times, Samhain is usually celebrated on October 31st to November 1 to welcome in the harvest and usher in the dark half of the year. Celebrants believe that the barriers between the physical world and the spiritual underworld okay, break down during Samhain, allowing more interaction between humans and the residents of the other world or the dead. Hence, ghost. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III of the Catholic Church designated November 1 as a time to honor all saints, and hence it is on the Catholic calendar, All Saints Day. Soon, All Saints Day incorporated and welcomed some of the traditions of Samhain. This was none other than a uh, vice of the enemy in which uh, uh, 
humans would um, worship uh, witchcraft, if you will. Uh, this was none other than a spirit of will, uh, witchcraft and uh, an uh, attack on the word of God. How? It was a blatant disregard for the teachings of the Torah and specifically the book of Exodus. First and foremost, when Yahweh said to his people, I am the Lord your God, check it, Exodus chapter 20, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods be before, before me or besides me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents, even to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, <coughs> but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. We love you, Father. And secondly, the book of Leviticus uh, uh, records in chapter 19, you shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. You understand the underworld. This is what Saul did in 1 Samuel 28, I believe it was, uh, I, when he sought out the medium at Endor, when he was running for his life and David was just about getting ready to come into his, uh, into his position as king of Israel. And Saul sought out a medium. He sought out a familiar spirit. This is d the demonic, you understand. He, 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 he sought out a medium, but he never once sought out God. Catch that. Give no regard to mediums. And familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. The religious leaders of the 8th century gave permission to the dark underworld and to the demonic, to other familiar spirits, the mediums, the witches, to inhabit or to be integrated into this pagan holiday. The evening before was known as All Hallows Eve, Halloween, All Hallows Eve. Over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, eating treats, carving jack-o'-lanterns, donning costumes, visiting haunted houses, glorifying the dead, watching movies depicting darkness, death, and evil. Contrary to popular belief and contrary to the ways and customs of the, the world and the thoughts of the people that we hang out with, it, it matters what we allow to come into our hearts, minds, and homes. It matters what we watch on television. This won't be popular with many of you, but it matters what we watch on television and at the theater and on social media. It matters. It, it matters when we get into pornography. It, 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 it matters. It matters what we allow into our ear gate, into our eye gate. It, it matters who we choose to associate with and hang around. It, it matters who we follow and what we listen to. It, it matters whether we allow God to be part of our lives or not. It matters what we believe and how our thoughts are aligned to the word of God, not to the word of people. It matters if we choose to pray and spend time in the word of God versus the other uh, distractions of life. It matters because deception is always lurking. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. I'm going to talk to you today about deception or truth and what exposes this deception 
And it's none other than the sword of the Spirit. Because God is truth. And the sword of the Spirit, as recorded in Ephesians, is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Deception defines as a statement or an action that hides the truth. Or the act of hiding the truth. In today's passage of scripture, Joshua was approached with an odd request. A request for a treaty of peace. A request for a guarantee that the Gibeonites or the Hivites, who they really were, Gib Gibeon only describes where the Hivites uh, specifically dwelled in the land of Gibeon, in Gibeon. And so they were the Gibeonites, but they were actually Hivites. Uh, they were villagers and are close relatives uh, uh, to the Hittites of that region. However, they did not want to risk war with the children of Israel and their God because they were convinced of their demise. So they resorted to craftiness and trickery, deception, you understand, to gain the attention of Joshua and the leaders of Israel. Your enemy and my enemy, Satan, understands our God. He is convinced. He knows of his de demise. And so he uses, he uses trickery. He uses deception. Uh, sounds familiar? Think about Eve in the garden. The enemy, Satan, Lucifer, used a snake to speak to her and tried to get her. And he was successful in eating fruit from the tree that God says, don't do. This is one of those vices, like fear, uh, like promiscuity. You understand, these are very wicked people. These, 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 uh, 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 these people, these Hivites, uh, were, were very wicked people, and they had the, uh, uh, I, I guess, the craftiness of mind to disguise themselves. Do you not know that the enemy of your and my soul has the, the power to disguise himself as the angel of light? In other words, he can make himself look like a Christian, look like a good person, and so on and so forth. This is none other than deception. Now, according to Genesis chapter 10, the Hivites were one of the descendants of Canaan, the son of Sam, uh, the son of Ham. The name Hivite has several meanings in the Hebrew and Hebrew tradition, such as tent dweller. And in particular, see, see, they want to dwell with you. They, they just want to hang out with you. And in particular, their name means wicked, wickedness. Catch this, snake. In Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul reminded the believers who were at Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the vices, the deception of the enemy. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are things that we cannot see. They manifest themselves through people. They manifest themselves through people against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And as Paul paints this picture of a Roman soldier fully dressed and ready for battle, he urges his audience to be dressed and prepared just like a soldier who is ready for battle, ensuring that each of uh, us take the helmet of salvation, which is the mind of Christ, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And thus my assignment today. I'm exhorting each of us to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, into that situation. I, I'm, I'm exhorting all of us, including me, to invite God into that situation 
I'm exhorting us to embrace the word of God, to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. The people of Gibeon, the, the, the Hivites, the Gibeonites spoke the language of deception. Listen to people when they talk. Listen, just, just listen to them. Watch them over a period of time. And the Gibeons looked the part. Their clothes. The Gibeonites presented false evidence that appeared real. They they showed him they, they showed him moldy bread. They they showed them how torn and worn their shoes were. And for Joshua's part, Joshua's inner man knew something was off. They asked for a covenant without a relationship. Now if you caught that no one just gets married just to get married. I, I, I gotta know you. I gotta know you. Are you compatible with me? They came to Joshua wanting immediately a covenant relationship without a relationship. That's not the way it works. If you want money from a bank, you have to probably have a relationship. You just can't go to somebody and say, cash my check. If there's no relationship with that institution, you're probably not going to be successful. They asked for a covenant treaty of peace without a relationship, and Joshua insisted on the truth, but instead the Gibeonites were so convincing and so cunning of speech that Joshua settled for the trick and not the treat. The treat is in consulting the Lord. The treat is in knowing that I've invited God in to this situation. I've invited God into this important situation. I, he, he settled for the deception and not the truth. In part, in, in part because of their convincing speech and their clothing, their moldy bread, the Gibeonites used deception, trickery, and flattery. Catch this. We are your servants. We've heard about your God. They use flattery to outsmart Joshua, a military strategist, a warrior, and they outsmarted him. This is how your enemy is in the spirit. He's always trying to outsmart us. And I've fallen many, many times to the vices of the enemy. We are your servants. Israel had never had servants. At least not on this scale. What a novel idea. Remember, they were in Egypt. And they were servants, servants to their captors, to the Egyptians. They were slaves. They had never had anyone come and prostrate themselves before them. This was something new. Wow, that sounds really good. We, we are your servants. Watch out for people who are fast talkers, impatient, and like to flatter you. And they are so quick to, or wanting to, make a deal they they change on a dime but you you already know that i'm a snake and so why would you why would you doubt because i know your stripes i i i i know who you are you've shown yourself over this period of time and all of a sudden now it's deception 
It's deception. I want to be on your good side now. I, 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 I want to form an allegiance with you. Let's, let's, let's be girls. Let's, let's be boys. Let's, let's watch out for those, those type of people because generally they have ulterior motives and ultimately it's to your demise. It's to take you down. Don't be so quick to want the house, the car. Don't, don't be so quick to make the decision for the relationship, for the marriage, for the... Sometimes things just take time. Sometimes we make these quick decisions. I know I'm guilty. And every fiber in me was screaming, no. But I wanted it. And then when I've got it, uh, now I'm just like, okay, what's next? The men of, of Gibeon said, uh, therefore our elders and the inhabitants of our country spoke to us saying, take provisions with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Now, therefore, make the covenant with us. I, I, I want to tell somebody, you, you need to just be patient. I know how the bread looks. I know how the evidence looks. It's false. It's deception. It's deceptive. I know how nice the house looks. But God says, wait. Wait. I, I, I see the evidence that the wineskins are filled, uh, are, are, uh, supposedly they were new and now they're torn and so on and so forth. I, I don't know who this message is for. I don't know. But, but, but God is sending a warning to someone that deception is lurking right, right at the door of your decision. The Gibeonites never told Joshua and the leaders of Israel where they came from. Joshua insisted and insisted, and finally he just gave in. They ducked and dodged Joshua's questions. And finally Joshua gave in without consulting with the Lord. And come to find out, they were three days distance from them. Three days. Trick or treat. Ever got tricked into doing something that you knew? was wrong and you did it anyway be it what whatever whatever drugs sex what what whatever the case may be for some unknown reason and inexplicably Joshua had a lapse in judgment and memory Joshua so if it can happen to Joshua, it can happen to you and I. Because it, it happens to us all, right? I, I believe God allows these things to happen. Because God could have stopped it, but he did it. And so for these three reasons, I believe God allows these things to happen. First is to let us know that we must learn to rely and depend on him. That's number one. And I don't have that on the screen, so my son can't put it on the screen for you. But but just 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 know, okay? God allowed it to happen. What happened between the Gibeonites and Joshua and the children of Israel, it, it was to teach them a lesson. First, you must learn to rely and depend on him. And you see, and that comes through yes, trial and error, but it also comes through prayer and the study of the word of god and so when we're out on our own thinking that we can do this and do that we're going to mess it up nine times out of ten we're going to mess it up secondly he also understands that we are human we have needs and so on and so forth and 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 we must learn through failure because failure and mistakes are excellent teachers Okay, number one, we must learn to rely and depend on him. Number two, we have to learn from the failures and mistakes of life that we make in life. We, we have to learn from that. Now, the good news is in number three, God is in control. 
Psalm 24 declares that the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The earth is, is, is Lord. In other words, he's in control anyway. He's in control anyway. Because he is the author and the finisher of my faith. He is the author and finisher of my life. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the bishop of my soul. He is the Lord, David says, is my shepherd in Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my exceeding shield and reward. So, so thirdly, that's the, the saving grace is that God is in control and that God, he's, he's got me. Even if I was supposed to turn right and I turned left, recalculating, recalculating. I was supposed to turn left and I turn right, recalculate. God is with us. God is with you. So even if you step out on faith, not sure which way to go, I want you to take courage today and know that God is with you and he promises to be with us until the end of time. Back to Joshua, he failed to recognize the constant need for prayer, and as a result of this wicked situation of deception, Joshua and the children of Israel would soon realize that evil and deception and wickedness would be a constant threat to them. Now, I'm speaking to myself, but I want to speak to you as well. What they experiences experience is what we will experience as as well as we advance the kingdom of god as we live for god all who will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution this is what paul told the young timothy you're going to suffer you're going to suffer persecution that's just how it is that's just how it is so so because there's a constant threat of deception wickedness and and and, and, and so on and so forth towards them. Jesus, he tackles this very issue in Mark chapter 13. And he says, Jesus told his disciples, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. And will deceive many. Take heed that no one deceives you. And so one of the primary vices that Satan uses, again, is deception. And Jesus shows us this. Now, now here's the million-dollar question. How do we avoid falling prey, or at least mitigating it? How do we fall prey, uh, how, how do we avoid falling prey to the spirit of deception? How do we avoid the pitfall that Joshua suffered? How do we stave off the spirit of deception? I, I, I have eight keys that for exposing the spirit of deception. I'm going to run through those right quick. Number one, first and foremost, is that we must stay connected to Christ. We must stay connected to Christ. He, he, he says in John chapter 15, he says, remain in me. It's a choice. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is all about us staying connected to God, staying connected to his son. This is about us remaining in him. This is where our protection is. <coughs> God is faithful, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son. Jesus Christ our Lord. See, so it's, it's in and through him. We are to stay connected to him. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. From all sin. So when we stay in Christ, stay connected to Christ, 
Okay, we mitigate some of these are uh, 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 these things happening in our life. Number two, develop a consistent prayer life. This is where some of us we we get impatient with God because things are not going the way that we want them to, or as fast as we want them to. So God teaches us patience. Develop a consistent prayer life. Learn to sit with him. Learn to just 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 be still before him. Talk to him. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. God promises to listen to you. Call to me, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Both of those scriptures are in Jeremiah. Now, one of my favorite psalms is Psalm 145 and 18. Uh, it, it, this is powerful. is that the Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. I'm talking to you about deception and truth. I'm talking to you about the sword of the spirit, which exposes the enemy. Develop a consistent prayer life. Depend and lean on the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. It's the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. And so many of us are deceived because we're, we're, we're getting uh, answers from the world, from people that we admire and so on and so forth. And it's okay to admire people, but it... They're not God, number one. And number two, it has to be tested against the word of God. Number three, I have some scripture for you. You can do this study in your own time, but choose to live godly in Christ Jesus. This is, this is big. Choose righteousness over evil. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, as I just, just, just mentioned a few moments ago, we will suffer persecution. It's a badge of honor. But evil men, Paul tells Timothy, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're going to deceive others, and they themselves are constantly being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I love this. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, he paved the way, he showed us the way, he is the way. He is the example. Number four, connect with others of like faith in Christ. Connect with others. It's important that we have healthy relationships with people who are of the faith. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of you. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They'll pull us away from God if we, if we are yoked. I'm not talking about that you can't have friends and, and talk to people. That's not what I'm talking about. It's, it's that you are, your life is, is basically centered in and around them. And they're going to pull you from God. Do not be, un and this is deception, this is how the enemy works. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelief. I am exposing the spirit of deception, and I'm giving you eight keys in which for you to recognize those things that are happening in and around your life. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? That's why they don't like you. There's something about you. Can't put my finger on it. 
She's arrogant. She's this. He's this. He's that. There's so it's the Holy Spirit. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching in the book of Acts, uh, chapter two, I believe it is. Uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. For everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Uh, these are cell meetings. These are fellowship meetings. They're, they're, they're together in Christ. Praising God and enjoying the, uh, the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And that's why the Lord added to them. Because there was complete unity and, and, and community in him. Commune. They com were communing to him, with him. Number five. You have to choose to stay in the word of God. It's like prayer. Only be strong and courageous. You remember Joshua, what God told Joshua. Observe to do according to all the law, which Moses must have commanded. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. You may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you have good success. Now, here, here, here's, here's a big one here. And it's Hebrews 4 and 12. For the, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Listen to me. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, reads each and every one of you. There is no deception, but it will read deception for you. It will. The Holy Spirit, when you have the word of God in you, when somebody comes on you, you already know it because it's in you. It's in you. The Holy Spirit's in you. I see you. Trick or treat. I see you. It's deception. It's deception. I see you. I see you. Number six. Love your neighbor and be quick to forgive your neighbor. Peter asked the Lord, he says, how, how many times, uh, you know, uh, uh, shall I forgive somebody who sinned against me? Up to seven times, Peter says. Jesus said, nope, nope. I do not say to you up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, it wasn't a play on numbers for you to get out your calculator and start saying, okay, 70 times 7, what he was telling Peter and what Jesus is telling us today is that I want you to continuously forgive one another. Continuously. That's what he do, does for me when I repent daily, sometimes multiple times, daily. Because I have to stay spiritually clean. People rub me the wrong way. Sometimes I do things, look at things I should not look. You understand. So I have to stay repentant before God. I have to repent of my sins. I need to be cleansed just like we need to take a shower. We need to clean our body. Your spiritual man has to be cleaned daily. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second like it is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. I'm running out of time. Number seven. Embrace patience. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't like I don't like this one, Pastor. I don't, because. You know, I like stuff that's in the air fryer, microwave. You know, I, I like it quick. I, I, I don't, I don't like this one. <laughs> Y'all, my wife she uses an air fryer, and I'm air fried out. 
It's a good thing. Amen and amen. Embrace patience. Embrace patience. Patience is defined as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, suffering, without getting angry or upset. I'm going to read that again because it's good. Patience is defined as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. What does this have to do with anything, Pastor? I'll tell you what it is. Number one, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And so it's something that God cultivates us because it's a weapon. Patience is a weapon. Christian pastor, author, and televangelist Dr. Mike Murdoch states that patience is the weapon that forces deception to reveal itself. Watch her. Watch him. Just, just be patient. Patience is the weapon that forces deception to be revealed. Deception wants us to make a quick decision. Deception uh, 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 wants us to rush into decisions. Make this right quick. I got to have it right now. I, I, I got to have it. I, I, deception. Listen, the Gibeonites forced Joshua's hand into, into a decision through the craftiness of words and urgency. I want it now. Make a covenant now. Not, I'll, we'll be back in a week. Well, we'll be back in a month. We'll come back uh, in, next year and see what you think. They wanted a decision right now. When that happens to us, step back. I got to think. I, I got to pray. I got to, I, I don't know. I got to get into the word. I, I want us all to understand this. Embrace patience. She is your friend. Let patience have her perfect work in us. Patience is referred to as a, fem a feminine, a feminine now. It's a feminine now. In other words, it has the ability to birth in the spirit. Good God that you are. In the Greek, it is a feminine noun. It's referred to as a her, a she. Patience in the spirit gives us the ability, okay, to birth the truth. <laughs> Good God that you are. The Gibeonites needed an answer immediately. Number eight and my final one. Seek God for wisdom, discernment, and understanding. When I don't know what to do, Lord, it's okay. Lord, I need wisdom on this. I need discernment. I need understanding in this. I don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand. Lord, I, I need your peace. Discernment means to have the ability to judge correctly. That's my prayer for us today. As we understand the sword of the Spirit. In other words, the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. The word of God, the spirit of counsel, the spirit, of, the, the the spirit of God, the the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, that we might give me the camera, son, that 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 we we might call out to God, especially in these in these dark days in which we live. That God would give us wisdom. That God would give us discernment. That God would give us understanding of what 
we are facing, that God would allow us to see deception for what it really is. Yes, we're going to make mistakes like Joshua. None of us are perfect. Remember, we're human. Yeah, God allowed it. God allowed it. And we'll learn from our mistakes. The Word of God, when you're in the Word of God, it, it helps us to avoid the pitfalls, much like in parenting. We try to teach our kids because we know the pitfalls, we know the holes that we've fallen into, <clears throat> and so we try to advise our children in such a manner uh, that they'll avoid those pitfalls. doesn't always work, and they have to learn. That's just a part of life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we thank you for you. We thank you for the word. The word is Jesus, the word, the word of God, the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, that the the answers to everything in life is in your word, is in you. And Father, the more we live for you, the more we understand the more wisdom we get the more we the closer we come to you the more we we live for you and lord i just i i, I want to lift up all of my viewers i want to lift up my family i want to lift up my children and my wife lord i want to lift everyone up father that that they that that they would sense the move of the Holy Spirit, even in those times, Father God, that their eyes would be open, Father God, to see the enemy for who the enemy is. The thief comes not but to what? Still kill and destroy. Father, I thank you for opening our eyes to see the deception, the deceptive tactics of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen, we pray, amen, and amen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd love to give you an opportunity to uh, um, receive the Lord, receive eternal life, receive salvation, amen, and amen to the glory of God. If I don't ever meet you, I'll see you in heaven, amen and amen god bless you for those of you who don't know the lord jesus christ you'd love to give the lord an opportunity to come into your heart and for those of you who are backslidden um you want the lord to rekindle that fire in you for him pray with me heavenly father i thank you i thank you for jesus jesus come into my heart be the lord of my life Come and set up residency in my heart. Cleanse my heart. Rekindle that fire. Help me to live with you, uh, live for you. Help me, Father God, to turn away from sin. Help me, Father, to live righteously in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I tell you, if you prayed that with me, it's just that simple. It's just, it's just, it's just that. Uh, it's just, you know, salvation. Paul talks about it in Romans chapter ten. I tell you, you know, with the mouth confession is made. We believe in our heart, and with the mouth confession is made. If you believe it, you are saved. It's just that simple. Anything else, Pastor? Do I need to? No. It's not about works. It's just about us just receiving Him. Now, all that other stuff that we struggle with, so on and so forth, give Him time. He'll work it out with you. He'll work it out with you. Just, 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 just think <coughs> uh, about prayer. Just think about the word of God and how I need to make time for him. Amen and amen. He'll take care of the rest. Amen. All those other things will fall off. Well, I, I, I pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit would be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you've uh, chosen to listen to this. 
Uh, tell someone about us. Uh, like, love, uh, whatever your comment is. Um, um, I welcome it. And I'm looking forward to teaching you next week. Next week is part five. It's your declaration. Amen and amen. And uh, I am excited to preach next week and teach the word of the living God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and week ahead. And uh, we pray God's very, bless, uh, very best upon you. Bye-bye.